How are you doing everybody? Jonathan here and in this video I'm going to answer a question I got yesterday about boot camp franchising. Now I'm going to do my best to make sure to keep this video in five minutes or less but this is a layered topic. Lots of examples that I want to give you. I want to make sure that you understand this business related topic. So um, let's get to it. I'll do my best to try to keep it under seven. So the question goes here. Um, hi I'm interested in setting up a boot camps and trying to get some tips and advice to start. I'm also thinking of buying a franchise. Is it worth it? All right, so great question. And in order to answer that question, I'll first start off with my life experience. So if you go back eight years or so, I was a 28 year old personal trainer in a big box gym, realizing that personal training was not making ends meet. I was making like $18,000 a year. And then I said, all right, well, I want to run boot camp because I can train more people in less time. I can earn more money. I can service more people. I can have a better quality of life. I'm going to do boot camp. So I was researching online and then I came across a guy named Bedros Koulian. And for those of you that don't know, Bedros Koulian is a fitness marketing guy and he also owns a franchise called Fit Body Boot Camp. So, um, and before I go any further, just to let you know, this site or this uh, video is not going to disparage any business or any person. Um, I'm just going to give you the facts and let you make an informed decision. So essentially at the time I, I went over to the application form for a Fit Body Boot Camp because I was like, okay, I'm, I'm sold on this boot camp idea. And I looked at the franchise fee and it was like $10,000. And that is before you factor in uh, purchasing equipment or securing a lease, um, marketing, so I was like, wait a minute, I have $10,000. I'm never going to be able to do this. So I quickly decided I'm not going to do this. And then in the end, I said, I still want to do a boot camp. Um, I may not have, you know, this franchise, but I'll, I'll make my own. So I decided to start BFF boot camp. Eight years later, the thing runs swimmingly and I get clients all the time. It's been very successful. Great. All right. So you may decide that you want to have your own boot camp franchise. And my suggestion is is I would not get a boot camp franchise. I'm going to go over a couple, but the main reason is I don't think any franchise uh, in fitness carries the cachet that um, that makes the sense out of the startup cost. So if I were going to own any kind of franchise, I would own a Dunkin' Donuts or a Starbucks. All right, mainly because by just by having the name alone will automatically attract people. All right, so. Uh, these these franchises out there, you know, they are ordered in their um, they're they're put you know they're put together in order, but they don't have a lot of cachet. So like if you open a Fit Body Boot Camp, you know, in Spokane, Washington, it's not like people are going to say, "Oh, a Fit Body Boot Camp! I've been waiting for that." Um, it's really going to be about how then you market and then how you train. So I'm going to analyze a couple of different. Uh, fitness franchises out there. So we're going to analyze um, the Max Fitness. I don't know if that's nationwide, but it's definitely uh, here in the Northeast. We're going to analyze Orange Theory Fitness. We're going to analyze Fit Body Boot Camp, and then we're going to analyze CrossFit. All right. So you have these four um, franchises, with the exception of CrossFit. Uh, that's a license, but I'll, I'll go over that in a little bit. And we're going to talk about cost and we're going to talk about price and we're going to talk about what you can do. So if you had a max fitness, I was looking it up, um, the startup cost is going to be somewhere between $131,000 and $260,000 when you factor in things such as securing the site and marketing and getting all the equipment that you need. And the people, the higher ups, you know, that issue this franchise to you, um, they're going to help you to do all that. But again, you're still going to have to come up with $131,000, let's say minimum. All right. Um, when it comes to the Orange Theory Fitness, um, you may be a little bit more familiar with that. But again, I don't think that it carries the same kind of name power that um, that would require you to spend all that money. So in order to have a uh, an Orange Theory Fitness, you're going to have to have a minimum of $150,000 in liquid assets and a minimum of $500,000 in net worth. Now, if we go over to the um, to the Fit Body Boot Camp, they're probably the most reasonably priced um, franchise at a starting franchise as of the date of this recording at twenty five thousand um, dollars. And I forgot to mention with the other two, with the Max Fitness and the um, Orange Theory Fitness, you generally have some kind of percentage fee, somewhere between two and ten percent of your revenue will also go over to the um, to the people that issue the franchise. So. If you have a max fit, let's just say it's it's ten percent for the sake of numbers. Let's say you have a max fitness, and then you make twenty thousand dollars in revenue for the month. Now you're going to pay off the um, 
the, the cost of your lease. So let's say if it's a 5,000 square foot facility and you're paying $5,000 a month, you take that 20,000, you subtract 5,000, you're at 15,000. Let's talk about your utilities. Let's say um, $1,000, you're at $14,000. Uh, let's say paying trainers. Let's say that you pay them, I don't know, over the course of a month, $2,000, that's $12,000. Uh, and then you have to pay, let's say 10%, if it was a $20,000, um, that's another $2,000 from that. And then there's the cost of in incidentals, like broken equipment, um, you know, marketing, things like that. So where you started off with this 20,000, you know, so much cuts into it, and then you pay that out. Um, and the same would hold true for an Orange Theory Fitness. Now, when it comes to a Fit Body Bootcamp, the unique thing that they do is that they have a flat fee. So no matter how much you make, monthly um you're only paying a certain amount out but you have to start off by paying out a twenty-five thousand dollar franchise fee and then you're going to be paying about a thousand dollars a month just to run your facility now they do have different incentives where if you open up more facilities you're paying less per month um but still that's quite a you know bit of change there that you're paying out uh especially since you this this twenty five thousand dollars and this one thousand dollars per month is not including the build out. So, you know, building out the facility, buying all the equipment and then paying for your lease. All of this money is coming in before you really even secured your first client. But it is the cheapest out of those three. Now, when you go over to CrossFit, CrossFit is a little bit different. CrossFit has a little bit more cachet as I believe out of the three, they spend the most money and they are most effective at getting people to know what CrossFit is. So if you went to any lay person and you say, have you ever heard of CrossFit? they'll probably say, yeah. Whereas if you say, have you ever heard of Fit Body Bootcamp? They probably, they probably won't have an idea unless they're in, this, in the industry. So with CrossFit, CrossFit is a little bit different. That's a license. So the difference between a license and a franchise is that with a license, you pay to use the name and then they don't have much control over the kind of advertising that you do, the type of marketing that you do in your location. Whereas with a franchise, um, they can set uh, barriers on how far two franchises can be apart. Uh, and in a lot of cases, you may have to purchase their marketing tools. Um, you can't like make your own, you know, um, shirts or whatever you might have to buy it from them and then resell it uh so then they always make money so the only barrier with crossfit is the layperson may have still a little bit more um, apprehension about doing crossfit as was the case with a friend of mine who opened up a crossfit uh, about a year ago and then found that his clientele was more interested in boot camp than crossfit and this person um, did not pivot their business model to just focus on bootcamp. They wanted to stick on CrossFit. And then lo and behold, unfortunately, the CrossFit location did not, uh, wasn't sustainable. It, it closed down. And that's after putting a lot of money into the CrossFit. So the CrossFit buy-in is a little bit lower. To purchase a license, it's about $3,000. But they also require you to have a level one, one of those, a level one uh, CrossFit certificate, which is $1,000. So it's going to be uh, $1,000 to get the level one and then $3,000 per year to hold on to the license. So the only barrier that you have is that the cost to outfit the location may be a little bit higher in order to compete with different CrossFits in the area. And since it's a license and not a franchise, you could have, you know, two CrossFits two miles apart, or you might not have that with the other three situations. So I would not personally open a CrossFit. I feel that your, your pool of potential clients is a little bit smaller because they have to wrap their mind around the idea of CrossFit. And even though CrossFit, let's accept the fact that anybody can do CrossFit, all right? Uh, you know, you can put your 60 year old grandma in it and you can put your 20 year old athlete in it. You still have to get past the perception that lay people have about CrossFit and not all of it is necessarily all that positive. So, would I personally have a, a Max Fitness or an Orange Theory or a Fit Body Boot Camp or a CrossFit? That wouldn't be the route that I take. Um, and I can just say this based on my own experience is that your success in your fitness business is much more dependent on, yes, your level of organization, but also the trainer and the culture that you create. The name doesn't mean that much in the sense that you know, you can call your, your boot camp anything, but if it runs well and you have, you know, a good person running it, you're going to be successful if you know how to market. And nowadays with the proliferation of 
Facebook advertising, Instagram advertising, and YouTube advertising, as long as you know how to market correctly, it's gonna be fairly easy to get people, especially since you're probably gonna be drawing locally and at fewer hours, so you're not gonna be running a 24-hour facility where the overhead is amazing. Um, in terms of my boot camp, I only run classes 5.30 a.m., 6.30 a.m., and 8.45 a.m., but my overhead is very low because I sublease. So that's the other problem. When you go with any other of these uh, options, you're all in very early. You have to spend a little bit more as opposed to if you do your own boot camp your own way, you can start slow. Like my first boot camp class, I didn't have any equipment. All right, I think I had jump ropes and um, and ladders and a couple of dumbbells and that's it. And after the first two or three workouts, you know, using what I had and being creative, I was able to get people to sign up. And once I did, then I was able to purchase equipment as I went. So I didn't have all the equipment that I have now in the beginning. I kind of like built it over time. And you can't necessarily do that when you have the franchise because there's gonna be a certain expectation if you have an Orange Theory Fitness, you're gonna to need to have like 20 rowers and 20 treadmills. So, um, so I wouldn't necessarily go that route. And I have a number of different examples of people who have seen success by doing it their own way. So first example would be me. I have my own boot camp, BFF boot camp, and then I've been running it for the last eight years. I have no problem getting clients. I don't even have a sign outside of my building, but I know how to market correctly and I know how to leverage social media and search engine optimization, so getting clients is not that big of a deal. Um, I also have one of the students of my Dumbbells and Dollars course, CJ. He's over in North Carolina. And um, he started a boot camp called BUF Boot Camp. And if you look at it and you put it side to side with a Fit Body Boot Camp, pretty much the same thing. All right, he just calls it something different. He runs it himself. He has an organization that he uh, he had the foundation of an organization through the Dumbbell Dollars course, and he has to cap out his classes now. Um, I have another trainer over in California, and she runs a boot camp. It's a Body Best Fit. And if you ask me, if you look at the inside of the boot camp, it looks as good or better than any, you know, Orange Theory Fitness. And then she gets to put her own flavor on it. She gets to control what she does with it, how she markets. And then, you know, she may have to pay overhead for like a facility, but she doesn't have to pay that extra, you know, 10% or whatever, or 2%, whatever the amount may be for the, uh, for the franchising fee. She gets to keep that on her own. So what is my advice to anybody that wants to do a franchise? Listen. If you have uh, you know, a net worth of $500,000 and $150,000 worth of uh, you know, liquid assets that you want to put into a, a boot camp, call me and then you can license from me and then I'll help you set up for less than a CrossFit would and then you can start small and work your way and not spend $150,000 all at once. Or if you want the education on how to start your own business, you just simply go over to my course. It's dumbbells2dollars.com and it teaches you everything from structure of workouts to marketing to getting more clients to you know doing nutrition, everything under the sun to make sure that you see success. So you don't have to start off spending a whole ton of money. You can grow as you go, and I always say that's the best route to take. You can build your own culture, you can call it what you want, and then if you grow the way that you expect to, you can sell licenses to use your name the same way that I sell licenses to use the BFF Bootcamp name. And then I can just create an extra website for somebody, give them the tools that they need, give them the support by meeting with them you know, once a month, and then they're off. So you don't have to spend a ton of money. Would I recommend that you uh, buy into a bootcamp franchise? No, but I've kind of laid out the landscape of the industry for if you want to take that advice. My advice, the Dumbbells of Dollars course, see how much you can accumulate and how much you can accomplish just by getting practical advice on how to start a business successfully. I don't think you want to spend $150,000 or $200,000 or $50,000 or $1,000 a month on another franchise. But that's about it. I hope you found this video helpful. Remember, if you have any questions or comments, put them in the comments section. I always respond to the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. But uh, if you just happen to stumble upon this video, subscribe to this channel. I put new videos up all the time on all things related to business, personal training, boot camp, and seeing success in all three. So stay subscribed, uh, watch my videos, comment below if you have questions, and as always, remember to eat healthy, hydrate, drive safe, stress levels, all get rest, don't slap anybody, love your clients, they will love you back. I'll see you all tomorrow or the next day, and you have a good one.